Hello everyone and welcome to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. In this video, we will talk about the stomach, the anatomy of the different parts of the small and large intestine uh, of the dog. So let's get started. So let's uh, remove the liver completely here and uh, look now we have more space we can look at the different divisions of the stomach as you can see the stomach is located like this dorsally inside the abdominal cavity um, it start more on the left side at the beginning there we can see the opening where the cervicals move through the uh, uh, move through the uh, the diaphragm so this is here the the the, the cervicals here this is the cervicals it moves toward the you know uh, the cardia the first part of the stomach this is the cardia here at this level after the cardia we have here the fundus again we have the body and finally we have the pylorus the pylorus again now it's more clear uh, the greater curvature of the stomach, this big curvature here, the greater curvature of the stomach, and the lesser curvature of the stomach is here, in this area where we have the lesser omentum, lesser omentum. Let's now uh, move, uh, um, after the, the, the stomach, we say that the bilor is continuous with the first part of the small intestine, or what's called the duodenum. This is the duodenum. If you allow me, I will just move the greater momentum to the side to be able to see the small intestine. I will just move it to the side completely like this. And now, let's start with the small intestine. The small intestine is divided into three parts, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. So, uh, from the pylorus, from the pylorus, the duodenum start with what's called here the cranial fle duodenal flexor. Cranial duodenal flexor. After that, the duodenum moves caudally here, forming what's called the descending duodenum. Descending duodenum. In this case, let me just tell you that the mesentery of the duodenum is short, comparing with the mesentery of other uh, small, you know, parts of the small intestine. And that's why. The, the, the descending duodenum will be located and fixed and will stay dorsally inside the abdominal cavity on the right side like this. So if you open, want to work on this, go directly to the right dorsal half of the abdominal cavity, you will find the descending duodenum there. Again, so the duodenum start with the cranial, with the cranial duodenal flexor, the cranial duodenal flexor. After that, it moves caudally forming what's called the descending duodenum. Uh, caudally here, caudally, it forms also, just a minute, caudally here it forms the caudal duodenal flexor, so caudal duodenal flexor, caudal duodenal flexor here, and after that moves uh, cranially again forming the ascending duodenum. Again, sorry for the repetition here, we have the cranial duodenal flexor, we have the descending duodenum, the caudal duodenal flexor, and ascending duodenum. Um, just for your information, to, to, to know, to tell you exactly where the ascending duodenum starts and where it ends, uh, in this case, you have to look for this fold here. There is a fold extends between the ascending duodenum up to the descending column, which we are going to describe later. So this fold extends again between the ascending duodenum to the mesocolon of the descending column. This fold here called the duodenocolic fold. Duodenocolic fold from the name, yeah? Duodenocolic fold. Here is the beginning of the ascending duodenum. You have just to follow this fold. And in this case, uh, once the fold uh, ends, it's fine. Once the fold ends here at this Once uh, the fold, this is the duodenocolic fold again here between the ascending duodenum and the descending column. So once the fold ends, uh, so that means at this level uh, we have the border between the duodenum and the next part of the small intestine, which is the jejunum. jejunum. So let's start with the jejunum. The jejunum comparing to the duodenum has a very uh, long mesentery, as you can see here, mesentery of the, uh, of the jejunum or mesojejunum, where we can find the jejunal arteries and veins, of course. 
Um, okay, and the genome itself is very, very long. Uh, if you follow it, 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 we need time to end it. So um, this is all the genome with a very long mesentery, as you can see here. Okay, if you follow, follow up here, this is all the genome. And finally, we are looking now for the ileum, which is the last part of the small intestine. If you, if we can hold it like this, uh, you will find the, the, the ileum once you find this structure here, which forms like two or S form, you know, this one here at the cecum, the cecum in the dog. So once we have the cecum, in this case, we will uh, find the ileum, the last part of the small intestine. This is the ileum here. Okay. This is the ileum. Uh, in all animals, guys, you will find a fold extends between the ilium up to the cecum. This fold here, this fold here, the, uh, the um, iliocecal fold. Iliocecal fold, iliocecal fold. In all animals, we will use this fold here to know where the border between the ilium and the jejunum. Okay? Um, in all animals, um, the, the, the fold is very big in the way that if you follow the fold, it will end at the border between the jejunum and the ileum. In the carnivores, this fold is very short, and we cannot use it to look for the border between the jejunum and the ileum. In this case, what should we do? In this case, we have to look at the antimesenterial surface of the ileum. Antimesenterial, that means this free surface here. Antimesenterial, so the other one, that surface of the ileum, which is attached to the mesentery, called the mesenterial surface, and the antimesenterial surface is the free uh, end or surface of the ileum. In this case, in carnivores, you will find uh, uh, one artery, one artery moving on this surface here, called the, the antimesenterial ileum branch. The antimesenterial ileum branch, and in carnivores, we have to follow this artery up to the end. So once we find the end of this mesent uh, artery here, this will, uh, you know, give us the borders between the ileum and the jejunum. So we will not follow the uh, what we've learned in other animals, like um, looking at the, at the at the end of the uh, iliocecal uh, fold. But we in in the dog we will follow this artery here, antimesenterial ileum branch. And at the end of this artery is the border between the jejunum and the ileum. So that means this is the ileum here. It's so long here. I mean, this long here. This is the ileum. And after the ileum, here we have the cecum. Cecum is not developed in, in carnivores. Uh, there is, you know, no function actually for the cecum here. Comparing to the function of the cecum in other room, in the ruminants, for example, or in the, in the, in the horse, in quine. So it has this specific shape here in the way that um, um, the cecum here in carnivores uh, is, is always filled with gas. And that's why we will find, if you look at the x-ray, you will find two bubbles inside the abdominal cavity. Uh, they uh, uh, represent the location or the, um, of the cecum. So this is the cecum here. It's very small here. After the cecum, let's move to the large intestine and in this case let's move to the small to the to the small intestine to the side like this i will try to hide the small intestine again on the right side we can find the uh, we can find the that cecum so the cecum is located always on the right side even in all animals uh, and even here in carnivores okay from the cecum here we have a very short uh, ascending colon this is here, the ascending colon starts from the cecum here up to here. It moves cranially. The ascending colon is very short here, comparing to other animals. After that, the ascending colon continues uh, uh, to the, um, and moves to the left side, forming what's called this part here, the transverse colon. This is the transverse colon, which continues on the uh, left side here and moves caudally, so from here, from here, caudally, we have the descending column. We have the descending column. Uh, if you remember, we said that there is a fold extends between the descending column and the ascending uh, duodenum. And we will use this fold here in the way that if we have the ascending duodenum, you will directly find the descending column. And if you have the descending column, it's very easy to find the duodenum. Okay, what is the name of this fold? The duodenocolic fold, or plica duodenocolica. Okay, so this is the descending colon. The descending colon is located always on the left side, as you can see here, and fixed to the dorsal abdominal wall, of course, by the mesocolon. 
the mesentery of the descending colon there. And um, finally, it continues caudally inside the pelvic cavity, uh, cavity uh, with the rectum. With the rectum, how can we find the border between the descending colon and the rectum? In this case, uh, I will show you later uh, how you have to find uh, one artery coming from the abdominal aorta directly. This way, called the caudal mesenteric artery. The caudal mesenteric artery moves toward the, the the descending colon and gives at this level two arteries. One to the uh, uh, moves you know uh, forward or cranially to supply the descending colon called the, the left colic artery the left colic artery and the other branch moves caudally to supply the rectum called the cranial rectal artery at the level of this uh, caudal mesenteric artery we will consider the border between the descending colon and the rectum and after that we have the rectum of course which moves inside the abdominal cavity and ends finally to the you know by the anus again i will go quickly with you through all parts of the small and large intestine from the pylorus here we have the cranial uh, duodenal uh, flexor after that we have the descending duodenum descending duodenum forms here the caudal duodenal flexor after that we have the ascending duodenum Please remember the fold, ascending duodenum. At the end of the fold, we have the um, jejunum. The jejunum starts here, and it's very long. As you can see, all what we can see here is the jejunum. Finally, finally, once you have the tzikum in your hand, you can find the ilium. This is the ilium. Remember the artery here, please, and the fold, the iliotical fold. And the, you know the, the name of the artery was the antimesenterial, the eye branch. After that, we have the tzikum. If we move the small intestine to the side here, we can see from the tzikum here, the ascending colon, ascending colon, very short in the dog here, we have the transverse colon, and finally on the left side, we have the descending colon. This is the descending colon, which continues uh, um, to the rectum and finally to the anus. This is everything about the small and large intestine. Uh, uh, before we end here, I will tell you that uh, the small and large intestine are uh, um, um, supplied uh, by what's called the cranial mesenteric artery and the caudal mesenteric artery. So I will try now to remove uh, uh, some of this uh, small intestine to show you exactly the blood supply to the different organs inside the abdominal cavity, including the stomach, the spleen, the liver, and all of these structures. So see you soon.